Brittany, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Welcome back to Seattle. <laughs> Thank you. And Exciting. You just got done with a conference. Yes. And yes. I guess it was more than a conference, right? Like absolutely. You guys were just kind of going after some stuff, and we were. Yeah, it was really fun. Kind of a fresh environment of bringing sons together in the context of mission and business and creativity and just building more family relationship. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Now, last time you were in Seattle, uh, uh, you were at, you were actually living in in L.A. Yeah. Like last, so okay. So last time you visited Seattle and we connected, that's probably about, gosh, probably about a year ago. Uh, -huh. uh you, you, I think probably a year and a half, a year and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were, you were in LA, you're doing all kinds of stuff there. You, you have kind of like a media assignment on you as well as kind of this governmental, um, assignment and they, they overlay and they overact, um, with, with each other. Yeah. But what's kind of happening in the whole kind of entertainment thing and scene with you? Like, what, like what, what, what have you been up to? Well, it's been interesting because, yeah, I haven't been back in L.A. in almost, well, yeah, since last Seattle, so a little over a year. And the Lord's kind of taken me into this hidden place in the natural, um, but we've still been facilitating things in the spirit regarding just Hollywood and, and the mountain. And um, we've been just really seeking the Lord and how to shift the structures that aren't looking like heaven. Okay. And there, um, there's a few of those. Yes. Yes. There's a few <laughs> in Hollywood. Yeah. And and then also just going in for the blueprints in how to build what does look like heaven and how Hollywood is meant to look like, how God created it. And so, um, and there's definitely been stirring. I mean, we've seen a lot in the news of stuff being exposed amongst the false structures in, in some of the you know, powerful people who've been kind of, you know, forming what that looks like. Um, so that's good that that's being exposed and kind of dealt with. I want, I want to dive into that okay. a little bit if we could. Sure. Um, how long were you in? How long were you in uh, Hollywood for? About twelve years. Wait, you were there for twelve years? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's a lot, lot longer than I than I realized. Yeah. Yeah, and it was that just like um, super intense, like being in that just whole kind of scene. I mean, I, I can only imagine like the, the people go there to, to not be hidden. <laughs> people yeah. go there to be um, discovered. Uh -huh. And, um, but you went there specifically to be kind of hidden and embedded into that whole kind of scene, right? Yeah. I, I didn't know I was going there to be hidden at first. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> like I had, you know, a piece of the vision, this big picture the Lord was showing me, like you're, you know, I did, I grew up doing music and had a passion for acting and like, so I was already functioning like with those gifts. And then I had a heart to create content that was releasing truth and life and just all aspects of who God is in a mainstream way and in a pure way. And the Lord had been showing me that he was going to be launching a new kingdom system within the center of the current system, not like a side on off to the side like the christian industry had been not that that's bad sure sure but it served a different function right and so um and that this new system would explode and go beyond what that current system had been able to do and help facilitate god's people to really be who they're created to be uh, as stars that don't draw glory for themselves but point to god their creator and so i I moved down and I'm thinking like I, my mom, my mom always jokes. Cause I said something to her when I was moving down, I, I went down after college at age 22 and, um, I was like, mom, you never know. This might happen by Christmas. Sure. Like all the, this whole shift and you know, and that was in October, you know, and she just kind of like laughs cause I thought all of it was going to happen so quickly. And so it was definitely really what the Lord took me into was this boot camp. Wow, wow. And really for the first eight years, it was like he he would open doors, like he opened doors in music. So I started recording and got a band together and started performing gigs. And and we started uh, a prayer meeting in Hollywood, I was living. So that was kind of the thing, like you're going there to kind of dive into like the the music kind of scene within Hollywood, or the or music and acting. 
and acting too. And acting too. I hadn't yeah. done as much acting. Right. So, um, so music was already, I had already been doing that professionally to a degree, um, coming out from Seattle. And so I knew like that was what I had the most experience in stuff, but I was excited to pursue and explore acting more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, so you assemble a band, you're, you're putting this band together, and then that's also kind of turning into this like kind of prayer gathering. Yeah. And so the, there's kind of this um, spiritual kind of churchy kind of kind of dynamic that's starting to form. Yeah, yeah. And we were just praying for revival in Hollywood, and and then these doors were opening, and we were playing in these clubs, and then I'm I'm getting to experience what the club atmosphere felt like because it was very dark. But it was exciting because I've always loved being in the dark places and just sure. releasing the light and just, and not being, you know, overtly like Christian easy and like, sure, sure, you sure. know, just, yeah, loving them in a, in a way that they can respond to, you know, and, um, so we, we had some, you know, just interesting experiences with that. And then at one point the Lord was like, okay, you need to stop with this band I'm going to shift. And I was like, but we're getting into all this momentum. Like, why? You know? Yeah. Um, and he's like, trust me. And so I was like, okay, we need to kind of cool it for a moment. I'm not sure why. And then he opened the door into acting. And then suddenly I'm I'm in these different acting classes and getting favor with different casting directors and different things. And, and then I was just like learning and growing with that. And then I actually got... I'd, I'd done like a couple short films in um, was just getting a little bit of experience. And then I booked my first supporting role in a feature film and I was all excited, like, yeah, super stoked. Like, awesome. and I didn't even feel, I'm like, really am I, I didn't even feel like I was good enough yet. Like, cause I was still felt so new and, but it, it was like, okay, this is awesome. This is exciting. And like, we had already had like the cast party, like a, before we started shooting um, like a month in advance and to just build relationship and kind of get start getting to know each other and yep, comfortable yep. with each other. And then I think it was four days before we started shooting, the Lord said, you need to turn this role down. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, like, you what? didn't. And he's like, because this would be compromise. Wow. Wow. And... I was furious, but part of me knew because the role was very subtly seductive. Okay. Not overtly, like sure. not to the point where if you're watching it, you're like, oh, this is crossing the line. Yep, yep. But what I would have had to tap into to okay. actually play that, it could have opened a door. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I had never, you know, that hadn't been my life, but it was like... Yeah, it was like that was this testing. Interesting. Yeah. And I was like, why didn't you tell me this a month ago? <laughs> like, this is very unprofessional. Like, four days before shooting, and here I'm going to, they're going to be pissed at me. Like, yeah, totally, 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 totally. <laughs> and he's like, are so you. How did that conversation go? Oh, well, first the Lord was like, are you going to obey <laughs> and trust me? And I'm like, yeah, you know I will, but this bridge is going to be burned. And sure enough, Oh, the director was furious. Wow. And, and I understand. Like, I, it's like, you know, so, but. You'd already had the pre-shoot party and everything, yeah. right? Like, you know, like you have to now. Yeah. And so then I'm just praying. I'm like, Lord, you need to then provide the right person for them so they don't right. get screwed, you know? Right, like, right, right. And I, I trust that he did. I I haven't spoken to them. How, how, did, how, how did that film do? Do you know? Like, how, how it did after it came out and was released? Like, I... I'm not sh Did it I make it to it Netflix? It, it was... That's how you know if, it, it was, if it's successful. It was it way it before thing. Netflix. Oh, was it? Okay. <laughs> I'm older than I look. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Me too. Um, yeah, because that would be... Do you, Have you been in any movies that are on Netflix? No. That's like I, a bucket list thing for me. Like, it'd be so cool. Like, I don't even care if I'm like an actor in it, but it'd be so cool to just even have your name like on a credit, like that, on that Netflix. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, maybe we can, we can collaborate. Yeah. I got some ideas for some crazy, crazy movies. Okay. Yeah. I know some people. Some people. They're not exactly like <laughs> Christian movies. They're more like horror movies, but like, I got some ideas. Okay. Like, like yeah. 
Anyways. I want to hear these ideas. Yeah, I got an idea about a moose. A like moose. like a cre- that, that sounds scary. No, okay, so yeah. check it out. Like a, it's a it's like a a Canadian town that's like abandoned. It's completely abandoned because okay. this demon possessed moose was like haunting oh my this like like terrorizing this, is this small Canadian town. Is this a cartoon town. or No, no. <laughs> that's a good idea though. <laughs> like that's actually I'm a good kind idea. Of picturing this animation or <laughs> Pixar <laughs> live action. It's, okay. it's Pixar's first horror movie, right? <laughs> Um, and then these guys, like they go, like these guys, like maybe it's a like the filmmakers, yeah, it's like Blair Witch, right? Uh-huh. And and, uh, and they go back to this town okay. to find to hunt to kill this this moose that had been Whoa. that terrorized. So it's, it's totally like a black comedy. It's kind of like like okay. you know, it's kind of like these guys with thick Canadian accents. You know, it's bl- very Blair Witchy, like you know, like with the camera, <laughs> nice. and you hear the moose out we in the need woods. More of that, yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh! Like it was <laughs> boogers going everywhere, but like, it, but can you just like? I, I know enough of it's not you know. But I, I, you know, so I got ideas. Okay. So if you know we'll, people, we'll talk you wanna, more. We'll yeah, talk more. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now that I've hijacked your your storyline, but you were you were obedient to the it was Lord. Worth it. <laughs> awesome awesome so you're obedient to the lord and you met with him they were furious but it was really yeah. kind of like it was kind of a test for where the lord was going to be taking you and yeah and and literally that was the last acting that i did and the lord basically said when it's time to go back into acting you're not going to go in the same process oh interesting i'm going to open the doors and so don't look for it basically cool it'll cool. come to you and then he redirected my focus back to music. And and my younger sister actually had moved right around that time down and we started doing music together. Awesome. Which that was a fun season as well. And so and basically like for eight the first eight years, it was like these I'd get thrown in and favor and open doors in one area and then I'd just be learning how they operated but then every time there would be a point that God would pull me out because to go further, I would have to compromise. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. And every time it was a test. Wow. Am I wanting to, am I getting tired of waiting and wanting to like, okay, I'm just going to make this happen because this opportunity is here and this is what I'm here to do. And, or am I going to trust God's best um, and ultimately, that's all I've ever wanted because I've ne- I've never wanted to become an artist in any capacity or person, for that matter. Sure, sure. That professes the name of Jesus yet is doing things in the way of the world. Totally, yeah. Because like, and that's what I was seeing. So many believers, like, I'd have pockets of friends, and I'm like, yes, we can change this together, and then they would slowly choose compromise. And then I'm like, because 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 of the pressure to compromise, or do you think that a compromise was already there, but it was kind of more of like a Christian name only, or, or were these like sincere, legit Christians that were compromising in order to make it in the scene? Well, both, because because what I found is in that environment, any selfish motives, any mm. any type of motives that aren't of God, they will surface. Yeah, totally. And, and it surfaced to me, like there was some ugly stuff that I had like, I was like, oh wow, I really <laughs> want to do this my own way right now. Yeah. And it's looking kind of ugly right now. And I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry in this moment, but I will be later. I'll repent. But you know, like, so it's, but it, then it's the choice. Am I going to let God purify that out of me or am I going to choose to That's let awesome. that remain and go my own way? That's awesome. So now, because I'm sure there's so much there, like there's so much there in that, during that 12 year period where you're like, you have this band, you're auditioning for these different roles, you're just trying to figure out this whole kind of thing and seeing Mm -hmm. that that Hollywood is. And, um, uh, but then over time, you ended up kind of like finding yourself there almost on assignment, like that the Lord really put you there. And um, and, um, when we met, it was right during it was right during the beginning of the whole Me Too movement and a lot of the stuff that was getting exposed and, yep. and really Hollywood was right in the center of it. You had these big name producers mm-hmm. that had been operating in a certain culture with certain very, very unhealthy expectations, very abusive expectations that had been going on 
for a long time. And all of a sudden it was being exposed. Stuff was being brought into the light. Yeah. And um, it's really interesting because that's really, that really lined up with how you guys were praying and operating governmentally. And is that the kind yeah. of thing where you can bring us into that journey? I know that there's certain sure. things that you can say and certain things that you can't say perhaps, but <laughs> if you could kind of like um, bring us into like what that looked like, because you were in Hollywood in probably one of the most, um, uh, uh, like it was, I almost think of it almost like a revival, in the sense that like it was a major act of purifying, and and the mm. for writer, I mean, I, I understand that it was also exploited by different organizations and different things, but sure. but um, that God was really at work there, and some things things have radically changed. Where you'd have to be just a fool to think that you're going to operate underneath that old paradigm using your power right. uh, to force people into those kinds of situations. So. Yeah, if you could just bring us into what that what that particular kind of journey looked like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, after like a few years of testing and not fully understanding the why, like I understood, okay, I'd have to enter compromise and I'm not willing to do that. But then about five or six years in, the Lord started showing me what the current Hollywood system and music, music industry and, you know, film and television was built on the foundation. And it, a lot of it is actually built on the occult. Really? And, and as I was, cause I was going after just healing and deliverance and, and cleansing bloodline of, of stuff that had access to me and my family line. And so I was learning, you know, like anytime you're going into battle, you want to know the enemy's strategy. You don't focus on it because you get a better strategy, right, right? Right. And so it's like, it's so important for us to understand what the enemy is doing. And really all he can do is twist how God operates. Interesting, yeah. Because he can't create even his own strategies, but he takes what Yahweh, how he set things up, and then he twists some and tries to seduce us in to trading into that like he did with Eve and and then you end up building his kingdom and come you know coming under that wow. and wow and so i yeah as i was going into that personally he started like connecting me with legit resources and legit people who knew what was going on and and when you understand how they operate um you see it all over Hollywood and, and that's why like the whole, you know, and you'd hear, you'd hear rumors about the casting couch and like where w women would have to sleep their way to get certain roles. And, um, and then you'd hear stuff of, for like music artists, like selling their soul to the devil or, or signing blood contracts and different things. You know, I'd, I'd heard little things, but, sure, but sure. then I started actually seeing, oh, this is actually how the cult operates. And cause in heaven, the two most powerful things is the blood of Jesus and the DNA of Christ. Wow. It's like the blood like shifts the alignment so you can enter into the DNA and become who he is. And so what the enemy uses is blood sacrifice and sexual trades to gain power and control over people. And so... So power is the, is the attraction. Yeah underneath it all it, it's a it's a um trading into that place of power even probably more so than influence i think oftentimes in the church influence is the is the big hip where like i want to have influence i want to be in you know, i want to but 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 what i've noticed is oftentimes in the contrasting kingdoms <laughs> mm. um, that are not of the kingdom of light it's not really about influence as much as it is um that place of of or even money for that factor. Like people would rather have power than to have influence or money and well, to do anything for it. So it's really interesting mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Well, and what and what a lot of the body of Christ doesn't understand the people like are are the majority of people both in the church and just society think influence means you're famous, you're in the spotlight. That's right. That's right. That's right. But what influence is is actually having power to shape things so the people who actually truly have the most influence are in the shadows and nobody knows who they are wow wow and if the enemy and they probably prefer it that way 
Exactly. They don't want to be the poster child for, <laughs> yeah. They yeah. want to be the puppet master behind. Exactly. And then they choose vulnerable people with gifts and talents and personality to be the faces of it who are puppets for their agenda. And if people really knew what they were up to, they wouldn't buy into all of it. Wow. And, wow. and if the enemy is mimicking God, what was the last thing that Jesus told the disciples? He said, go make disciples of all nations. He didn't just say disciple people like salvation and revival and stuff. He said disciple nations. Well, that's essentially what they've been doing. Wow. Wow. Because music, entertainment, and media have shaped the mindset of our global generation. That's actually what's been discipling more than the church, more than the schools, is because these kids are listening totally. to music 24 7 and now with the phone like that's what is and so much of it is subconscious and a lot of it the parents you know don't even know about it but it's like okay who's really discipling this generation who's really influencing it's not the ones with 50 million people on social media it's those who are their handlers or their puppet masters are kind of setting the agenda through the record labels or who are financing what's going on because they call the shots because without that so it's not because i think there's, there's there's this idea that um that let's find what sells and then let's that let's market that which is marketable mm-hmm. but what you're saying is is that's that's not necessarily what's what's taking place that there's actually a very subversive hellish agenda that's determining what's going to be marketable and then that's what's what that's what's being fed to people like that's the allure of the seduction in it of yeah. of let's not give people what they want let's tell them what they want and then yes. let's and then let's provide it for them exactly wow yeah 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 and um and then and i'm so glad that we're talking about this because there has to be a radical shift in how we think and how we process regarding what wealth is or more importantly what it's not what influence is and yeah. what it's not and what power or real like power basically being ability Mm -hmm. and to a great degree i think that um many people have felt like we've lost all of our ability to be able to function and then we go Mm -hmm. right to well it's because we don't have the money to Mm fund and so to a great degree a a lot of our values have been far off because of our our understanding of how things are actually operating yeah um, in the kingdom and in the contrasting kingdom so i find this conversation so fascinating how did you like kind of stumble on some of it was the stuff that you saw in the spirit or just stuff that you were just hearing from kind of the from the kind of the entertainment community well the first person was a, f- a friend of mine at church um and we had started just praying for hollywood together um even just the two of us um and she actually told me that because so- something brought up freemasonry mm. um so i don't know if we were talking about cleansing or healing in our bloodlines or what but um then she said do you know that the entertainment industry is built on freemasonry and i was like no you know and she and she was the one who gave me the first um legit website and source and and she was like i don't remember how she learned but she was like the lord never lets me tell anybody this but he told me to tell you and so that's kind of what led it so at first it was just the two of us kind of like okay we need to find out what's going on and then and then the lord started connecting me and and really when i then i'm i'm learning all this i'm like well no wonder i can't be a part of it and the lord was showing me as well you can't change a system if the foundation is corrupt that's right you have to build an entirely new foundation and so I was like, okay, currently God has been sending in people to make an impact and they've impacted people, but you can't change the system until you build the new system. It's like when, when the Lord tells Jeremiah, you're called to tear down and uproot, right. plant and build. It's like, you know, and so... Um, and diving into that new system, do, do you have an idea of what kind of the the aspects or the um, the parts of that system are? Like, are like what I'm getting at is like how practical is 
is it? Like we're talking distribution, um, advertising, mm. even the theaters themselves would need a, a completely contrasting system, or is it more kind of like spiritual dynamics and what is what, what is being built on? Well, really, because um, some of those are just platforms. Yeah. So, but the like the foundation is first and foremost the ecclesia. Okay. So, like the Lord was showing me as well. And, and I'm not saying anything bad about sure. the systems, but now he's bringing us into the higher, right? And so um, even the church system has functioned, I mean, really since Constantine came into the picture, he, he shifted how the church had been functioning in Acts, and he put a new governmental structure in place mm-hmm. that worked with his kingdom and kind of set up him overseeing all of it in... Kind of a, um, a Roman prototype. Yeah. yeah. And so that's literally still the system that we're operating in. And so I I believe that's why the church has been limited. Because even those who, you know, want revival and they're pure hearted and God's doing stuff. Because the structures are still modeled after what Constantine put in place, not what God did. It can only go so far. It can only do so much. And I mean, you look through all, all of scripture, God is so particular. Like these are the blueprints for the tabernacle. These are the blueprints for the temple. It has to look like heaven so I can come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to just like, oh, here's a little trickle and here's a little trickle. And everyone's like, woo, we got drunk. And that's good. <laughs> totally. But what good is us getting you know, drunk and joyful, it, drunk in the spirit. <laughs> in case drunk wondering. at church. You're like, what are you talking about, Brady? <laughs> like, yeah. like just, you know, Absolutely. feeling that if we're not putting it into governmental practice. Like, That's right. Because we're, we're sons first. So everything in the kingdom of God is first and foremost family. We are sons. We have that inheritance of our father, but then we're kings and we're priests. Yeah. That's good. So, we have to learn to operate out of government and that has structure and that has protocols and systems that God is very particular about. And so he's been showing us those governmental systems. And and also like, even when Jesus talked about the Ecclesia, they were known as the called out ones. It, it was, they, they had their own realms of function that they were responsible for in their daily lives. And then they would come together to make governmental decisions over these realms of society. When they came together, it was not under one person's name. It was not under an organization. It was as sons, as people, they were coming together for government, for the benefit and this, the discipling of, you know, that region or wherever, whatever, was under their responsibility and then they'd go back into their realms um and so that's another thing where a lot of with the church structure it's like hey come into the church but there's this limitation and what the lord's shown us because even you know um is it paul who who mentions the foundation is the apostles and prophets so like Christ is the head, mm-hmm. we're his body, and the apostles and prophets or the sons are the foundation. So when this is functioning as a foundation, everything is birthed out from and there's no limits. So like building family and training people to operate out of the government of heaven in those structures, then it's like, oh, you're called to develop this business or you have this creative gift and or you have this technology let's as sons come together get the in relationship and out of our seats in heaven in zion let's get the blueprints and help you build this and birth this as a foundation and alongside not as oh you're you're under my authority and you're just Absolutely. serving into this church you know and so it's it's literally it's flipping the mindset and setting things up for forever expansion and limitlessness and it's all interconnected and then it's not attached to 
you know, one person or one organization. Absolutely. So, you know, absolutely. And I'm just thinking about like, um, like, uh, how we tend to when we think about like the kingdom we tend to contextualize that within um church like i almost called it churchianity but we we fr- we we take our whole christian experience and we we encapsulate it into a sunday mm. and maybe a a wednesday when you look at st- statistics people that do identify as christian um typically um maybe go to church once once a month so right. if the entirety of your of your um, sonship experience is being contained in one Sunday a month. And then you're asking the question of how do I bring um, kingdom integration into society? Uh It's, it's almost impossible because you're not, there's not even going to be a, a, a a contextualization for your own identity and and how does that integrate into your work and and everything else like that. And what I think is really interesting is the marketplace and the massive revolution that's taken place in the marketplace in the sense that there's still hierarchy and that that you have a CEO, CFOs, COOs, you have a certain level of hierarchy, Mm -hmm. but in the visioneering capacity, you have like these assignments or, or the vision. And then it's, it's like your hub point and then you have your creatives and your, Mm. And your your marketing and R and D, all that, all these guys begin to hub out. The hierarchy model, even though it exists kind of corporately within the structure, is still there. That nobody is submitted to like that paradigm. It's, the paradigm's mm. not restricting them because they've empowered and they're almost governing over. Like they've given given so much freedom, and yeah. I, I think that that's happening within. I think that it's slowly, be, I think that the, unfortunately the business realm, the marketplace, not, I shouldn't say unfortunately, I think that God's in this and there, there's like just this new paradigm for leadership and family mm. um, that's being demonstrated in, in the marketplace. But like you said, it's being demonstrated in heaven. And so we should be, we should be getting our models and blueprints from heaven and not from Microsoft and Google. Yeah. But I, I am encouraged to see that. Even just that old school, heavy handed form of leadership and force submission for the most mm-hmm. part in Seattle is not going to fly. Like you can mm-hmm. try to lead something like that, but you're gonna be end up leading a very small cult because there's just been mm-hmm. so much um, I think health has <laughs> just come into like into the culture that says like no I'm not gonna be controlled and manipulated. Right. Um, like that's not healthy, you know, and that's not mm-hmm. family, that's not heaven. So like, so I'm really encouraged, even if people aren't using the same word choice, that a massive heavenly shift has, is occurring across the fabric, I think, yeah. of, of, of humanity. And I think that people that have wisdom to be able to say, let's do something really cool, but I'm not going to force you to come underneath my leadership. No, mm-hmm. let's come around, instead of coming around yeah. me, a person, like, hey, I'm Darren, I'm awesome, who wants to <laughs> partner with me and so into me? It's no, 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 like, hey, let's collectively find the father's assignment for the earth and then let's bring the key individuals and sons around that assignment so that's how we're trying to visioneer and think even here at src of this kind of this banner kind of thing that we're going after and then all these assignments one at a time but so i like how you're phrasing it and building it with your word choice but you're right that is the foundation that we can begin to build upon because then we're not building a, a man or a man's mission, but we're building this this kingdom thing on the earth and driving out yeah. darkness and and the kind of darkness that still exists within the religious structures. Yeah, that's great. When you're mentioning how some of these companies like Microsoft and stuff are are starting to shift in this, and and really that's rooted in the sun's operating in government that's shifting because even if we haven't fully been manifesting the new structures in the earth we're shifting in the spirit and so that's able to Mm. start being released out of heaven and so god is releasing that into current structures so that part of his dna is coming out even though it's not the complete thing awesome because it's being given access to anyone who's going after it whether they know him or not and so um Yeah, so that is encouraging because that's just shifting as, and I know like you guys are governmentally, like you're shifting things in the atmosphere over this whole greater Seattle area. And so like that's a key part and, you know, there's others as well. Absolutely. 
So yeah. it's like, okay, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing our job. We're learning to do our job. Amen. And it's still just the beginning. We have so much to grow in as sons and in, as kings and priests, but it's like, okay, it's, it's happening. We're like, yay, let's keep going. <laughs> Stuff is changing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um, I'm still curious. What, how are you, what are you seeing foundationally or like counter system when it comes to entertainment? I didn't know we were actually going to go this direction. We were talking. I know this is where we started, so it makes sense that we're here. But yeah. I, I'm, but I am loving this conversation. Yeah, so like, great. like what do you, what do you see? What are you seeing as far as like, because um, I do know that that sometimes in the church I've heard a negative, um, like this neg- like I've heard even like entertainment being ascribed to like the spirit of Jezebel, right? Like. <sighs> Like any any form of entertainment is wrong, or especially the making fun of any any form of entertainment in the church. I don't, you know, like you know, like that's just entertainment. As if entertainment is this. So it makes sense that there's not a lot of Christian pioneers in the entertainment. Like they started off Christian, and then they weren't celebrated in the church, and so they had to go somewhere where they'd be <laughs> celebrated. Perhaps right. we've heard that story. Right. Yeah. Um, and it always cracks me up too when people are like, "Did you hear they were raised?" Like sometimes I wonder if some of these stories are actually true. Right. Like I was actually a pastor's guy. Right. You know, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, what, what what do you see as far as like a um, a counter? A counter scene that could mm-hmm. actually be just as qual- like more have more quality than even the existing kind of structure like what what right what, how could that even happen <laughs> so okay so first to lay a bit of foundation for that is what is the very first thing that Yahweh did he created so I was gonna say turn water into wine <laughs> but that was Jesus that's Jesus so. all right let's go back <laughs> You want, uh, you even, want to start at the beginning. Even further back. The yeah. ver- yes. <laughs> My Trinitarian theology. No. Go ahead. <laughs> well. <laughs> no, just even, <laughs> even Jesus. Cre- that was creating. Absolutely. Right? That was yeah. yeah absolutely. It was absolutely. Shifting the matter to create something. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. But, and and so and it's interesting because what is art, entertainment? It's all it's creating. And awesome. if you look throughout all of history. What do people go to to be inspired by? They go to the theater. They listen. Like, even in the ancient times, it was like there was some form of creativity that inspired them. Even if it was purely for entertainment purposes, it's like it's striking a chord in you. Like, there's more. That's interesting. There's, yeah, that's really interesting. And And I want to create and I want to... And so, um, so the theater and television, movies, music, all of this stuff kind of takes us back to G- Genesis one. It kind of takes us back to that origin point, and and there's something that resonates with us. It does. That's like very, that's fascinating. If he's ultimately our creator, and we're to be like him, our highest calling is actually to create and co-create with him. Wow, that's awesome. And and also, if you look throughout history. When every time there's a major acceleration of technology and awareness and shifting in culture, it was a time where the arts and entertainment were very prevalent and new sounds were being released, new art was being released. And I don't think that's an accident. I think, and to me, I think that's a part of our worship. I think a part, I mean, everything's, out of a heart of worship but it's like god is fun and it's i think entertainment is deep like it's not just a certain i mean sure anything you can turn into surfacy and meaningless or dumb or crass or whatever um but there's just such depth to it like laughing loud like just the joy of the lord is our strength I can tap into joy by watching something that is so freaking funny. And like, you're just like, ah, I don't know. I like, sure. I think Jesus was hilarious. Like I, years ago, side note, but it has to do with it. Years ago, I thought I got this vision for, and I, I feel like this may be a film or something that the Lord has me do at some point. I hope it's a better idea than my (laughs) loose idea. I don't know if I can top that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's better. 
But I was just, I was so tired of all these people thinking that Jesus was this calm, boring person. And I was like, you know, and I'd had, a, I've had a relationship with him my whole life. And I'm like, he's hilarious and he's so creative. And so I was thinking of this, this modern day version of Jesus. And I was like, you know who I would cast as Jesus? Will Smith. Will Smith. I, I, I never would have guessed. <laughs> I lit. Oh, I should have let you. <laughs> but I was like. Interesting. Because this authority and like this masculinity but then freaking hilarious totally 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 and like captivating in both contact you know i was just like that I straight out like- of bethlehem born and raised on a playground <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got one little fight come on sorry you might have to write <laughs> write that whole thing and do, um do a parody on it yeah um anyway so but yeah so I, to me it's like Every and God's constantly creating, you know, even what He created in the earth isn't the only thing. And I believe there's always new things being created, you know, in realms of heaven, and, and we're, we're called to help do that. So, um, but yeah, going back to like music and entertainment, entertainment I think is so inspiring, and especially, I mean, in most entertainment, like you're releasing regardless of intentions you're releasing some kind of message you want to kind of catch because that's another thing is there's something disarming about a story like like if i'm reading a book that's informational about truth i could already have these subconscious blocks like i don't believe this i don't know if that's true i don't know if this is true but if all of that was put into a novel or a story i'm not going into it with my guard up i'm going in oh th- it's a story wow. let me wow. and i enter into the story completely open to experiencing it for what it is and therefore i receive from it i receive whatever i'm imp- impacted by whatever spirit is attached to it whatever truth it's trying to release totally and that's what like tv and film does where it's like and that's why jesus told parables yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. He told stories. He created this visual world for people to enter into and it helped them receive the truth or or the concepts that he was trying to, you know, bring them into. And so, yeah, I think and then entertainment is just disarming. So you receive when you're just like, "Oh, this is fun." Um, and then with music, man, Music is the ultimate because everything is foundationally made up of frequencies. Vibrational frequencies. And so music affects everything. It affects our brainwaves. It affects our bodies. Whatever frequencies are being released to us through music, it's literally transforming our DNA and our molecules and our mindsets, whether we're aware of it or not. And so... Music is absolutely key, and that's that's something that's just been so huge on my heart. Cause, like, even even like when I was back in college, I was, was when I really started writing more seriously and started my first band. And I would just write about everything. Like some of it was worship, and some of it was like, get on the dance floor. Like, cause I I love dancing. Like I. I feel like God loves dancing too. He's doing it all the time. <laughs> like, um, cause it's this expression. And, um, and I remember the first time I wrote this song about being on the dance floor and like, you're attracted to someone and it just came out of who I am. Right. And I was just like, this is amazing because all we hear about love songs or, you know, attraction songs it's lustful Mm -hmm. seductive perverted twisted demeaning etc yeah and the lord and this was like this beautiful kind of just romance and intrigue and clean and there's a purity fun yeah yeah, purity in it yeah and 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 yet it was still fun so fun which oftentimes unfortunately those two concepts get get separated i think sometimes we think purity not fun you know (laughs) right right so 
Well, and so that's awesome. That's an awesome thought. And the Lord was showing me, like a lot of a lot of the the Christian label industry, and it's not not against anybody, of course. Again, um, but a lot of them have had they they don't necessarily let the Christian artists write about love songs unless it's to Jesus. <laughs> Right. And what the Lord was showing me is, therefore, the enemy has had full reins on framing up what love and attraction is. Interesting, looks like. interesting, interesting. And so, even all these kids and all my friends growing up, all the love songs they were exposed to were perverted and twisted. Yep, yep. And their yep. lives, st- not all of them, but a lot of their lives started reflecting that. And it was like, where are the songs that are like, showing those contacts because you know when you hear a married couple tell about how they met and got married and you know their romance and stuff it's like oh where are these in the songs like interesting yeah and so it's a great point so it's like in music again it it's it's in the fabric of everything and music is in all of entertainment like every every show and film like there's music every store in the mall you go into there's music so and it's releasing stuff into people that you're receiving subconsciously that creates the belief systems that you don't even know are there. So and, that and when you, also when you think of like um of course the amount of money that's in movie making and filmmaking is obviously a huge um right there's a lot of money in that whole thing and that whole mm-hmm. scene. But then when you look at the um what music does, it's a completely different thing. Like if you go to a movie theater, I don't know, like there might be a couple hundred people, mm-hmm. you know, if it's a large theater, maybe 400 people or something, mm-hmm. if I, maybe five, I don't know. But if you go to a large concert, you have thousands and thousands of people. Like like just think about yeah. like U2 and they come to and they pack out the Seahawks stadium. Like that's mm-hmm. 70,000 people and that's sold out. Like yeah. you can't, if they, if they could fit any more people in there, they would. Mm-hmm. And, um, but like when you think about that, like movies don't do that. Like movies don't pack out arenas right. like like the way the bands do. Right. And then also like I, to a, as far as I know, I I don't know of like a like a revolution or like f- like like you know like the kind of things that music stirs up in the emotions. Like you when you see a movie, like you said, you might laugh like ha ah, or cry, mm-hmm. but like very seldom do you see like a whole movie theater, a whole audience participating in a film. And I just yes. think that music um, almost demands a participate. Like, like there's so, so many different kinds of yeah. styles of music. You can't help it. Like not like, like bang your head to, or tap at least the very least tap your foot to yeah. but some types of music, like especially you play music near kids and I think you see the most genuine human response, like the most mm. inherent kind of genetic response to music. Even little babies will respond by dancing or clapping. Yeah. Or it's just fascinating how it's a part of our programming. Yes. Um, you know, versus I think like like movies and entertainment, it it's the storyline that identifies with us and takes us perhaps to a far more extreme place than we would typically go. And that's where we're like sucked into the drama of it all mm. or the absurdity of it all. Right. Cause both things are appealing, right. but when it comes to music, I like it there, it, we can't help ourselves <laughs> it, like music. It like, we are like hopeless to music because, mm. because music's in our DNA, right? Like it's yep. a part of like, we were, we were sung into creation. Like he yep. sung us into being, and he's constantly singing over us. Yeah. Yeah. That too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, and it's like, if he's constantly singing, we need to be releasing into creation what he's constantly singing, not just over e- each of us individually, but over creation. It's like, that's part of what I believe was going to bring the restoration of all of creation, not not only wow. humanity. Wow. Wow. Is in in what music does too, it opens portals. Like I, another thing the Lord showed me was how, like King David, he set up this twenty four seven tabernacle of worship, nonstop, and they hadn't even had that before because before then, only the high priest one day a year could enter the holy of holies. Right. And then he goes 
and surpasses the protocol God gave because he actually, he saw what was post-Christ and tapped into that through the sound of heaven out of worship and created that portal so that the presence of God could come and rest. And that was the first time God started calling Jerusalem Zion. Wow. The city wow. of David. Wow, because that's really good. It, that sound, that sounded like heaven, broke open that portal, allowing and, and creating it. So, oh, this looks and sounds like me. So I can break all these protocols I gave them and come down and rest. And then allowing Solomon to manifest the wealth and abundance out of wisdom's house and out of Zion into all of Jerusalem so beautifully that it drew the rulers of all the earth to come check out what the heck is going on here. Wow. And that's what it, it's the sound breaks open the portal the structures allow the government and functionality of then manifesting heaven into creation and that's what we need i don't believe we can shift the business culture and the technologies without shifting the foundation of the sound and entertainment because that's what's going to break open the portal for the rest to come out and be manifest in land. That's in awesome. Ocean. Yeah, that's awesome. It's funny. I, I was speaking a couple of weeks ago and um, uh, on a Sunday, and my son wasn't feeling good. So he was on the front row. And I was like, I was kind of having fun, but I was like, you know, God doesn't have a big Xerox machine up in heaven. He's not up there making photocopies of past revivals. Like, we don't need to go back to 1994. We don't need to go back to 1948, right? That's good. But, so, like, I'm saying one thing, but then my, my little boy, you know, Peter, he's not too little, he's seven, looks over at his mom and goes, we need to go back to the revival of 1702. Like, so random, right? Huh. And so Andrea's like, what? <laughs> and so she Googles revival of 1702. And the, the Queen Anne architectural revival came up. And so I don't know if you're familiar with, with that. I like, no. like Like I wasn't. But what, what I found interesting is that the Queen Anne architectural revival took place in a city in the UK. Huh. And, that, and it was basically a whole, it was a whole reformation of architecture. That, really? It, that took place in a city, but then it spread throughout the entirety of the UK. Like it had, it had huh. national implications. So uh, and and so I that that's so fascinating because w- what we've been what we've been con- talking about or, or conversationally contending like all of these things is not contending like oh god like not no, not a lot right. of groaning about it but just this whole place of like cavalling with the Lord and, and mm. entangling with his with his agenda for Seattle and everything but Queen Anne in the UK and of course we have Queen Anne yeah here in Seattle. So it's like it's just fascinating. Like he one didn't of say the that governmental mountains. Yeah, one of the main the the mountain in the center of the city. So the city right. is surrounded by the seven hills, and then but the one is in like the city center, Queen Anne, right? right? Uh-huh. And so, anyways, the thought there of of a movement that could begin in a city, you know, and but the the movement always begins with the sound. Like there's always a sound, and then mm. then the movement follows, and. We, yeah. I was sharing that with our people, and there was a guy in our church that he's not a part. Like he was a visitor; he'd never been here before. And he came up to me afterwards. He's like, "You have no idea how significant that particular word was." Hmm. Then he starts going through the like the musicology hmm. of what music releases on the earth. So first comes the sound, and then the art follows the art, and then the then the culture and how. Hmm. But he yes. went. He started like in the classical music, and he took me through like in like five minutes. He took me through this like this 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 overarching kind of like music, musicology like this like like the science of music and and this Come anyways on. it was so fascinating so what you're talking about is if we can begin to capture if we can begin to capture heaven's sound like david did if we can see mm-hmm. it and hear it and then begin to reverse engineer these things onto the earth that yeah. they will actually capture not just the heart of a generation but they'll actually begin to capture and create a new a new heavenly realities on on the earth that'll go far beyond Sunday context or a local church context. Yeah. Well, interesting that that revival, I totally have a hair in my eye. Sorry. There it goes. Pull it it out. (laughs) Like it's not moving. Got some tweezers. Um, (laughs) I keep them in my office. I just sit here and just kind of, you know. (laughs) Um, But how interesting that 
you were brought to the architectural revival because architect that's dealing with structures. Oh, interesting. So it's the sound and then building the right structures for that to come into. Yeah, that is. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> Man, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a trip because I was saying one thing and Peter's like, no, we do need to go back. We need to go back to the revival of 1970 and Queen Anne and UK and just I love that. pretty crazy. Huh. So cool. Um... What are is if it's cool if I just kind of switch gear? I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to kind of hit on in that hole because there's so much. We've opened up so many cans in there. Right. <laughs> um, there was something I wanted to go back to. What was it? Um, oh, you you had asked about then what would the the new structures? Look yeah, like? yeah, yeah. Um. Some of that we're, def- we're definitely still learning as we go. Um, but definitely out the foundation being the ecclesia of family and people learning to be in their governmental position. Because the thing that can get dangerous is if whether you're ready or not, if you're launched to a high position, in, especially in music... You're operating out of high government, so if if you're not set up right, you're very vulnerable and can either you're either gonna be used for someone else's agenda, um, and and it, just so many of these people have they're they're literally slaves, and they're in so much bondage, and so it's like because they didn't know who they were. And they didn't know they're they're functioning as priests, but in a twisted way. Hmm. And and so it's so important and for anyone in any role, but especially one that is grabbing the attention of masses, is for people to be trained up in, in their true identity as sons and have that true family because that's another thing life in entertainment is it can be crazy lonely crazy lonely and you never know who is like wanting to take something from you or just be oh be associated with you and stuff and and there there are few people in the spotlight like that that have true family that they're safe with that they can just be like I'm not on a pedestal. Like I'm just like your bro or your sis. Like, you know. Um, and so to create that family, and and the family who can handle that, who's not like enamored with success, because I've come across very few Christians who can handle being in those rooms. I've I've been in environments with people at the top of the top, and let me tell you, there's less. I can count on my hands how many people I've known over, you know, the the years that I've I've been doing this that I would feel like I could bring them into those environments with me. Mm-hmm. But I've been praying for years. I'm like, Lord, we need whole groups of people to walk in, seeing these people for who they are, not just in a room of like an entertainment event, but to be able to create that atmosphere as family so they can actually come in and learn their identity and become who they are as well and it's not attached to their platform or their gift and so and then as well as those who aren't yet in that place but can be raised up and prepared um to to step into that and then empowering empowering them to, to really just be who they are um, in every aspect, including their creativity. And so we're still, we're still developing like bi- some of the business structures. Um, and that's not, that's not my expertise. So really I've, I feel like kind of some, some of our core, like we have the, the conceptual blueprint 
and the foundational piece to keep it pure and keep it aligned with heaven. But I've just been praying for God to bring experts who are pure and proven trustworthy wow. to be brought in because it doesn't mean we can't, you know, still go through the radio or go through these other platforms or avenues that are in place, but the governmental structure of operations and empowerment and the values um, and love and honor, that has to be there and developed as a really strong culture relationally and professionally to then go out from. And so, yeah, there's still a lot to see how that's to develop, you know, um, but God is bringing people together who can begin building that. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the, the, the word that keeps coming to me when you're talking is just, is the word and the value of trust. Because um, what you're talking about is like, will like as I step into favor and as I begin to be celebrated, can I trust you, or mm. or am I going to all of a sudden not not trust you anymore? Because mm-hmm. now I'm second guessing the, the motive, yeah, yeah beti- behind everything that you're doing. Like, mm-hmm. why is it you didn't want to have coffee before, and now now you're bugging me all the time to have coffee, right? Like, yep. like and so oh, all of a sudden, somebody now, it, I, you could mm. see where it where it'd be easy to like. Um, where it'd be easy to become very untrusting or very skeptical or suspicious Mm -hmm. when you step into a level of favor, wondering if just everybody's kind of wanting something, you know, wanting something out of you in the same, in the same, uh, light, the whole idea of celebrities, celebrities are almost celebrities because of that, because of the, um, the, because of that layer of separation and privacy, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why the gossip magazines and everything do so well. It's because you get an inside look on situations and things that you shouldn't, you know. Right. Here's Brad Pitt buying um, fruit at the grocery store. And you get to see these gritty, (gasps) these pixelated pictures. just like us. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's kind of what makes, you know, but the kingdom is not, the kingdom of heaven is not like that, you know. Mm. Like there there aren't those layers of, you know, and 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 I've been studying James recently and just like the whole because of the th- this elitist thing that's already penetrating the church mm. even before Constantine had gotten into it right this uh, this this crazy elitist racist um, ec- these economic divisions even celebrities in the church like that was already the mm. disposition of like the human disposition was already inf- infiltrating the church and James is like railing against it like we do not get to do right. this we do not get to take on he calls it worldliness like mm. And, um, and, uh, so it's, it is really interesting, like what you're, what, what, what you're, what you're talking about as far as a new kind of, a new kind of system. And also just this whole, my mind's going just a thousand miles an hour, like this whole place of like the kingdom trying to in- infiltrate, uh, that existing system and, um, and almost kind of like serving it or catering to it. And I'm just thinking of like these underground churches for celebrities, or you, mm. the, you, you, you actually have to be invited to. You actually have to be in, like an A-list celebrity to go. So mm. there's different levels of underground churches. Like there's some right. that are like, if you if you're like a grip, you you can get into the church. But there are other ones that you got to be basically a Kardashian to get into right. it. You know, <laughs> and so one hand, it's great that there are these missionaries that are kind of coming into that thing. But I also kind of wonder if there's if there's actually um, something that if history will actually tell us that maybe that was more harmful to the to the gospel narrative mm. um in that it was almost kind of catering to the the red rope mm. um system one well, and part of the reason some of them are doing that is because the other believers aren't trustworthy to handle people coming in and so there's not that safety for them totally and they need to be able to have come into families who have it's not just all people like them. You have household mothers and business owners and just like, you know, all kinds of people um, that just see them as family. And that's very hard to find thus far. Um, you yeah, know? you don't want to have to go to church and get, I mean, I remember when um, Brian Welch came mm. here just to attend a conference. Mm. And uh, back in 2015, 
And um, but he was such a stinking sweetheart, that guy. But I did feel bad for him because like he's literally doing selfies with people everywhere Uh. all the time, just like non non stop. And so you're right, there has to be like a culture that's created where um where people where people where people can be honored, but you know, they can be honored for their accomplishments while also their 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 space can be honored and their worship can be honored. Yeah. without being worshipped as, well, as, like as a man god. You do that, if you go to the concert, then that's that's the place. It's like, because that's what they're presenting. But yeah, if they're coming into family, that's not what you bring up. You treat them as family. You get to know that part of them. And so they feel like they can connect and not, oh, I, I gotta always be on or be ready for someone. And... um. Yeah, like that type of stuff makes me so like, ah, but <laughs> like I feel so protective over. You used to like <laughs> SRC, and now you're like, I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Just hey, those weren't our people. What that am was, I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> that was the region. I'll blame it on the region. <laughs> no, those are our no, people. No, but but what's good though is to realize, okay, we need to educate the people on this. That's right. Because right. I'm sure that they didn't even realize what they were doing. That's right. You know, but then that's like, oh, okay. Then let's let's help them understand and and learn how to see them as people, not as celebrities. Because first and foremost, Brian's our brother. Like, that's right. That's a- right. Anyone, it's like, oh, they're my brother and they're my sister, and and that's another thing. Uh, one one of the things I was grateful for as well is my first few years in Hollywood. I did catering jobs. So I served for catering companies that put on like these, the Grammys, Oscars, like in a lot of like private home, cool, cool. exclusive celebrity parties and stuff. Yeah. And all my coworkers who were all, you know, trying to make it in the business, you know, they would just be enamored and I would just be They're like dropping business cards and headshots. Right. And- oh, oh, what? I mean, I, I've seen coworkers get kicked out of houses really? because they did that. That was strictly against the rules. <laughs> but um, it, I would just like watch and ask the Lord what was going on and and just feel this love for these people. And I knew, wow, he's setting me up to serve them, to, to grow even more in my love for them, to also know how to prepare for whatever my role is and, you know, other believers. And I just remember being the most, you know, to use the typical terms, the most A-list event I was at was at a very well-known person's home. And I mean, literally every, probably 200 A-listers and everyone is going crazy. And actually most, most of the staff wasn't even allowed in the home. They were just prep. And I was, I was one picked to go in the home. And at first I was just like, standing with a tray you know with drinks and then people stationary and then one of one of the guys came over and was like hey can you just start walking around filling everyone's glasses and that was totally the lord so i got to walk in and out of around everybody and i had a couple moments where i i had to pull away and i almost started crying because of how broken these wow. people wow that everybody worships and wants to be like and and wants to work with and in one of them in particular um i was pouring her champagne and she just looks me in the eye and it it was the most empty dark lifeless that i've ever seen and this is literally one of the most famous people is it julie roberts no. Just kidding. Just start sitting here I, I'll say no to every guest. <laughs> I can resist. No, not Julia. No, but it, but it's someone wow. that if but I it, said it the name, off, it caught you off guard because you you wouldn't expect that. And then well, I was actually it didn't. Well, the magnitude caught me off guard, but I was I was I had already been experiencing it. But for someone who's so inspirational to so many people. I literally, I had to go back and I almost started bawling. Wow. And I was like, Lord, like, 
we uh, we've got to be seeing these people if we're enamored by them or their platform or their gift we can't see them how he our father sees wow, them wow that's really good therefore we can't truly love them and we can't be entrusted with relationship with them and therefore how can they come into knowing who they truly are when everyone even those who actually know the truth can't even see that they're in darkness and they're lost Okay, if I can't see that, I can't bring them into the truth. Totally, totally. And so... Wow. Uh, I, could, I've, I could go on about that. But, <laughs> but yeah, so it's like that trustworthiness of... And really, it's, it's found out of love. That it's, it's not easy, but it's that simple. It's like love and then and knowing who I am. It's like, I know who I am in Christ. I, I've... I don't know everything about what that means and I'm still growing in it. But then I can be with these people and not feel like I need something from them. It's like, oh no, I actually have everything you need. What can I release into you? You who has billions of followers and billions of dollars and are worshiped for inspiring or being amazing and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, how, how can I love you? And I've been in other contexts where there's been able to be more of a relational interaction and they just melt because they're not used to wow, wow, wow. that. They're like, and they just start sharing all this stuff with you just because they feel that love and they don't have people to talk to. They, they, And when they know, because they can sense a mile away if someone has a hindered agenda, even if it's in that person's subconscious. Totally. And they don't even realize it. Totally. But it it puts off an energy. It puts off a frequency. And they don't want anything to do with it. And they're around that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, they're around That's that all the time. That's their life. And so when they experience someone who is just releasing love and seeing who they are and even just spirit to spirit is calling them into their identity and... They're just, it's, it's amazing. And, um, but to, if we can build a culture of that, it's going to shift so much. You know? Yeah, it's really, really good. And that's, and that's, and that's what's important. That's what's needed for, um, for restoring these foundations, right? It, yeah. Is, is, is that we're gonna have to build on, on love. Yeah. Because if we don't build on love, then we're going to be approaching everything else through a fractured, with fractured lenses and a fractured mindset. Mm -hmm. We'll be approaching money and power and sexuality all through the wrong grid. Yeah. It'll be all motivated by a certain level of probably subconscious selfishness if we haven't yeah. passed these different love tests. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why this conversation is really, really important because we all need to examine our hearts in regards to even just idolatry and, yeah. and the worship of of man and most of us would say well if please fiverr ran into a you know uh lady gaga at the grocery store i'd be i wouldn't be impressed but you, you know but but you know it when you actually yep you know and i think that's what is so important that we're also really paying attention to the little things that are stirring up within our soul regarding to various emotions like you know anger and jealousy and when you see things on tv and, and it stirs up an emotion or it provokes mm. or it provokes a jealousy or like that can be a form of of idolatry that yeah. the lord's trying to deal with stuff in us so that that he can it goes back to trust so that he can really entrust us with these people that yeah. he loves that he loves so much yeah absolutely yeah, I, I remember one time, and my friends still don't believe that this happened. But I was like, I was working in West Seattle, and mm -hmm. my something would happen with my car, and um, I had like this old Mercedes, and it was super sweet, but it had a lot of issues, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, and it broke, it was breaking down or overheating or something. So I took it to this auto parts store, mm -hmm. and there was this guy with this truck, and I needed like a wrench or something, right? So I remember I went and asked this guy for for a, a wrench and um and he was like Arr, 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 you know it, it was it was stinking eddie vetter it told like it was eddie vetter and he was like and he gave me a wrench and he had a, like and so i told my friends about they're like that was not eddie vetter like why would eddie vetter have an old truck and like a rent like what would he be doing it like shucks like he's not gonna 
And um, and then you know, and then uh, several years later, yeah, I heard like Eddie Vedder. He lives in West Seattle, and like and like he's a big car guy, and like he's got old old trucks. Oh, like I was, I was like that was stinking. That was stinking Eddie Vedder. <laughs> so nice. yeah, Jesus, we just declare salvation mm. for Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, Eddie stinking Vedder. He's like one of my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, Father, I repent of idolatry. <laughs> After talking about people need to repent of idolatry and then being like, you're like, dang it. I'm like, ah, Eddie. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And if he ever does, like I should, like when he gets saved, you know, if he, if he's ever at a different church other than SRC, I'm really going to be wrestling with, with idolatry, Mm. a lot, not with jealousy. I mean, can you imagine like Eddie leading worship? Like, oh my gosh. Okay, you, you get to go through some some hard times. He's like he's like the original. He's like the original third day. Like before there was third day, there was Eddie Vedder, right? Before there was Creed, it was it was right, Ed. Right. All right. Right. Awesome. Now, okay. Um, I'm gonna pay attention. <laughs> I took a rune, a rune and uh-huh. and Tanner, out to this coffee shop uh-huh. um, down in downtown Seattle. Uh, this super legit coffee shop and it was in the lobby of one of the Amazon buildings, one of the new Amazon buildings. And they oh. actually and they have this like awesome Vic- Victrola? What's it called? Victrola? Yeah, I, I don't I'm not sure. It's like um there's an art gallery I in in, in the basement. Okay. I mean in sure. and, and, and the and in the entry area. So you go in and there's all these like all these huge posters everywhere, okay. like these glossy black and white posters mm-hmm. of, so it's like super modern, very clean, uh-huh. like very, like very hip. Uh-huh. But the pictures are all like these huge black and white glossies of the grunge scene. Oh. And like, and, and huh. like, and it was really amazing. And that's cool. And I could just tell that maybe a rune, I think Tanner's just too young. He's like 14, but, um, <laughs> I, even like I think they just did not share that that similar passion. Really? But I was just like That's I was like wow, like, this is so cool. <laughs> it's so cool to have something from a grunge era that yeah. doesn't feel grungy though. It doesn't feel like gross because right. that, because if you were actually there in any of those scenes, it would have been so stinky and just right. gross. But like yeah. when you can see it with, with these matted frames and everything, I was like, man, this is this is awesome. Good coffee. <laughs> celebration oh, of the seattle kind of nice. music thing and yeah i thought it, I, it, it was a uh, it was awesome that's cool so hey like um what what, what are you working on right now like what, what are you what are you either doing that's fresh and new or you're about to kind of launch into because i just i know that you're in like just a lot of transition and god's really doing a lot and i also know that mm-hmm. there's the stuff that you can talk about because mm-hmm. of your call and who you are and then there's other stuff that you know that you have you have to keep it more covert but yeah. yeah. What what stuff are you kind of allowed to share regarding just transition and establishing and you know? Okay. Let's see. What can I share? You're like, okay, all right. We we can do this. <laughs> all right. Um man, there's there's still a lot of things in process because and because the Lord's wanting us to be building these new structures. There's been very little music he's let me release over the years, um, and or a lot of very little stuff he's had me yeah just put out there and or tried to build on because he's like, no the new foundation has to be in place. Wow. And so, a lot of that last year I've been really diving into the business side of things. Okay. Um, at, at first it was a little overwhelming because I was like okay, Lord, I kind of just wish I could record my music and other people do their thing. And it, you know, but I know there's a reason he's wanting, just like you're, you got to learn all the technical stuff for, for this podcast. Getting you know, like, there. Yeah. Getting there. Yeah. 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 And, but the groundwork you're talking and you'll, about. Yeah. It's like, okay, there's a reason I need to learn all this. And it doesn't mean I'm going to be the one doing all of it. Cause I know it's like, I'm going to need experts who that's really their thing. Um, but it's like, okay, he's entrusted me with these foundational blueprints. And so as I've been learning how the current business systems work, like the entertainment companies, the record labels, you know, all the whole structure and flow of things, I've been like filtering that through the structures he's been showing me, um, that heaven looks like and kind of like writing like working out business plans and structures and stuff and then like 
he's connected me with people who have also been advising and, and helping and come alongside awesome. to a degree. Um, and so that's, that's been a lot of the focus this past year. Um, and then I'm, I'm always writing music. Like that's just always coming out of me. And so I have like a basic studio set up, like usually wherever I am. So, um, so I, I'm so longing to record my album. It's not quite time. And so, but I'm just kind of like, just kind of preparing the songs and I, you know, do kind of pre-production and ideas of, of, of what direction and and what is supposed to go on the album and this and that and kind of the order of things. And so, um, I have some of those pieces in place. Um, but and in another piece the Lord's been showing as well is, um, you know, talking about sound and how like sound of heaven and frequencies and stuff are very much a key. And though a lot of the technical um, recording equipment and sound samples and, and all of that stuff has been awesome in one way, in another way it's really... Um, it's really dampened and compressed the fullness and the, mm. the, the full vibrancy of right. sound. Right, right, interesting. And so um, he's been showing me as well, like everything specific that I record right off the bat for moving forward, even like the studio I record it in, the mic I use to in the producer i i know a lot of incredible people but i'm like who is the who sure for interesting each piece interesting that can help because i know everything sonically needs to be what it needs to be yeah and i can't settle for something that's just oh this is cool like let's sure. release it you know it's like yeah and so i've I like I feel the fear of the Lord on it. Like that's how important it is. Wow. Like wow. like wow. setting setting a new standard and some of it is re- restoring it back to cuz even like the quality of MP3s it's like just totally. the quality totally. um has just been suppressed and there's so much richness and more that is released when you have the fullness of sound and in, in the right sounds and um so yeah, so and even just this week since I've been up here, God's connected me with just ah some amazing people who are carrying key strategies and technologies with sound. Interesting. So so we're just like going at it. We're like, okay, we're okay, we're gonna be continuing this relationship, seeing what we can kind of build together. And so, um, interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've in the past I've tended to want to kind of try to guess like okay do I get to start releasing this by fall or this by you know like because sure. I like to plan because I want to be faithful with sure, what I'm sure, interested sure. you know but I've learned to just not try to figure that out um, because the Lord's just like the foundation is the most important and that is what takes the longest right and so yeah there's just there's still a lot of moving parts that are settling in and so um yeah, there's there's not a lot of specifics that I can share because, I mean, there there aren't a ton right now. Like totally, at least, totally, totally. I mean, it's all kind of under the surface and with relationships and vision. But it's it's. I think these next few months we're gonna start being able to actually kind of click more together. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting what you're talking about because it's almost like the, the it's like the tension of the artist. Because on, mm. on one hand, there is the um, the uh, the responsibility to create, mm-hmm. you know, to to bless the earth with something that 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 wasn't and now is because you released it, right? Yeah. Um, and so there's like the tension for the for the the artist tension, as I'll call it, <laughs> is this place where it where it's your desire to create. Uh-huh. But also what you're seeing, hearing, experiencing in your heart before it's been created um, mm. requires a certain level of integrity. And that integrity yeah. requires relationships, time, strategy, mm-hmm. environment, you know, and all, yeah. and all of these things. And so um, 
so I think that for a lot of incredible artists, the 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 tension there is that the the doers, the manufacturers, the like the um, uh, the publishers, you know, w- what is what's good about them is kind of like almost the forced accountability that this is your drop date. This is like this is right. this is the release date. Like it has to be. Um, that's great that that you have all this inc- creativity and all this art and all this integrity. Like, so what? It, this will be out on June fifth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then the attention of the artist is like, there's no way we're releasing this June fifth. You know, because it's not ready yet. You right. know, and so just just that tension. And then you uh-huh. have other people that are not artists, um, but they're stinking driven and they make up for not having talent with computers and, and digital technology. <laughs> Well, they have a different talent. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, there's, because I've noticed like some of the some of the people that get the most stuff done mm-hmm. aren't necessarily the most artistic; they're the most driven, right? And so, yeah, you know, and versus some of the most artistic, creative, just amazing, like the the most amazing thinkers and visual, like they, there's just not a lot of creative contribution to the earth because the the integrity level is just so high, which is awesome because you know mm-hmm. when it does get done. It's going to be done right. Uh-huh. So that's a tension that I felt within within my within myself. Like, at what point do I just do it? Right. Um, realizing it's not at it's not at this at, it's not at the level that I w- that I would appreciate. But can I create something that I at least can appreciate that I'm not judging myself? Like, I don't want to create something that I'm that right. I that I regret. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, so I just think, yeah, it's, it's an interesting conversation. It is, you know. Yeah, and I and I've done. I've done bits of all of it. Like I've released stuff that I didn't, I I was like, oh, this could be a little better. But the Lord was saying it needs to be released by this date or need. God was holding you accountable. Yeah. Like, cause I, <laughs> Sweet. yeah, I've never officially had anyone else telling, but it, if the Lord tells me, then like I'm on it. And then <laughs> sweet. That's awesome. Like, and that's yeah, what, that's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm hoping I have I, I'm looking forward to having someone in my life to help me do that as well, because um, I think that's an important balance. But um, and then like the, I recorded an EP years back that the Lord told me to produce all myself, and I'm I'm a producer, but I it was, it was like the first time I I'm not I still have a lot to grow on the technical side. And then, you know, the equipment and the sound samples and all that. And so it just, it was not where I wanted it, but he was like, produce this, like, this is what is going to be released. And so I just did that. And then I was still thinking, okay, we'll redo it with a legit producer. Yeah. And then he's like, release it. I'm like, are you sure? You know, but, but it was, that it was an important growing experience for me. And I think when he releases to really dive in, um, cause I know at least for me, he's been very specific on timing and something he showed me years ago was that my like official kind of launching into this, even though I've been functioning in it and, you know, done, had things publicly here and there, I've done a lot more under the surface. Um, when it was really time to release he said it will be in coherence with what i'm shifting with my people in all of the earth so not just about like launching one artist and the but it's like amazing okay it's tied to what he's doing and so um when he says it's time to like dive in with my producer and like okay it's time to record this for real and these are the timings then i know okay we'll have things in place to kind of yeah have that balance of like setting up what I need creatively to be free but then also the structures and timeline that that empower it not and that that's the tricky balance where you're not squashing the creativity or giving an unrealistic timeline but you also need that otherwise creatives will never release anything <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's right now, i'm excited about what you're doing just um with your own education and and figuring out the dynamics of how to create a foundation within within the music industry because mm. obviously that, that'd present you with a wonderful opportunity to build a platform to begin to champion 
um, young artists for their yeah. own protection as well as yeah, for their absolutely. own like healthy celebration and like because for the most part there's not a lot of like scenes or labels that that I think maybe necessarily really truly care for their for their artist you know yeah. sometimes it's almost like you probably it'd be the same dynamic in the Christian industry or or the secular in fact um, several friends of mine that are in the Christian industry say that the, they've been on both both sides mm -hmm. of, of the fence they say that the Christian uh, music industry is, is far more cutthroat than even right. the, the, the the second like in pretty mm -hmm. high like pretty high levels as far as those is you know um, when they're owned by the same all the same people now yeah I, I think I think the same. difference is that um, is that within the secular industry there's no like um, there would, there would still be a certain um, mask or a certain appearance of friendliness or whatever but still mm -hmm. like they're pretty they're, they're a lot more brutal I think or a lot more honest as far as if you don't if you don't produce or if you don't mm. give them exactly what they, I think so yeah I think mm. he is like in the secular kind of music scene it's like here's the expectation and if you don't meet this expectation here is the consequence mm. versus I think in the Christian yeah. industry there's just there's just a lack of kind of honesty and transparency regarding the expectation and oh, the consequence really? of not producing mm. the kind of art that they are really hoping to see fit their genre or their scene it's like kind of deceptive yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And of course, now I'm speaking of like 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 one particular case. I'm not speaking of like this uh, it's hard to make a blanket judgment right. on a whole industry based right. off of a friend that kind of got screwed over by an, you know. Right. Um but uh but certainly there's there's horror stories within no matter what industry or sphere you're involved in, there's going to be these these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. My point being is like what we need are are people with a heart of a of a father, a heart of a mother, yeah, but are still have the excellence and the affluence to be able to create healthy um, family environments where yeah. people can come into a scene and really make an impact mm -hmm. and not be just taken advantage of for yeah. for their art within that period of time, that period of cult culture where it's celebrated. Mm -hmm. and also, my goodness, that we would actually be able to start making art that's actually creative enough that it could be timeless and not just be, yeah, you know, limited to like a period of time where like where something funky was celebrated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and that that too has been such a pet peeve of mine of like a lot of the Christian culture putting up with subpar excellence and and on the nose excellent where it's like very obvious and not create like not all of it but that you know and it's like if we're getting this from the real source like what we're putting out should be the most creative, mind blowing stuff. That they're like, whoa! <laughs> like we thought we were amazing. Like who are these people? You know. And so, and I think part of it is because it was almost like it took us a while to be like, oh, we should be, we should be doing music like this too. We should be making films too. And as we were catching up, it was like the church was just celebrating any attempt <laughs> like yay we got a film out like and the idea that the... we have to like one up hollywood which is just ridiculous like when you look at the amount of money that the that like paramount and fox and like they, they they have no budgets you know like they have as much money as they want and so to think that that we can kind of overproduce a, f a film mm. or we're gonna out special effect hollywood i think is really really like that's that that's horribly presumptuous versus what we do have is the power of story and the power of creativity so if we could like stop trying to overproduce mm. these like these produce like like these producers but if we could really get back to the rawness and transparency of just the human experience without you know if we could just get like like get get rid of the filters mm. like if hollywood's trying to filter everything and, and present this incredible facade for you know if we're able to just um just say like yeah what does it look like to have no like sure we could have a budget but we don't want the budget we want for the art to speak for itself mm. i think that'd be incredible like mm. and I, maybe that's starting to happen i'm here and like i'm hearing rumblings of like of cool uh 
filmmakers uh, that are making cool films and they just happen to be Christian and there's like mm. a, there's a redemptive frequency on the stuff that they're making. Come on, yeah. I think that's cool. Mm. Um, uh, I think that's really cool. I think that's amazing, you know? Yeah. Um, and I would love to hear those stories more because to date, right. I cannot say that I have like a favorite movie yet that's been made by a Christian. Mm. Yeah. Unless you say Braveheart was unless unless right mel gibson's a christian he could be i I, you know he yeah i've heard different things but i i think he's kind of been a forerunner in cracking some of that open i know he's catholic i believe so um yeah absolutely catholic christian i'm I'm not sure and we we, we want to applaud uh everyone who's making redemptive and restorative art absolutely um no matter what their what their bent you know what their spiritual bent is like we really want to you know yeah well yeah because it's yeah we definitely honor that and it's um it's still breaking ground and, and opening things up and um but yeah and there there has been this process um for god's people you know doing it and and the, and the thing is too i think on one hand it's so important for us to not see it as too big to be able to function like these studios but the only way that'll be drawn to us is if we start operating governmentally it's good then that type of resources can come into our hands and we know how because you know right now if a person like a a typical believer was entrusted with a hundred million dollars they'd be like what do i do with all this like and they might do whatever their own dreams are like give to some charities and whatever but me i'm thinking okay that can fund one semi-epic film you know like i think event the last avengers film cost 500 million wow 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 that's crazy that's just so crazy but then it made (laughs) the larger the film the more money it makes and so it's actually not that big of a risk. Sure, so, sure. Because they know they can get the best of the best and do something so freaking epic that it will pack up, pack out the theaters, which is much rarer than concerts. But, you know, these giant ones are kind of bringing some of that back because it's so inspiring. You know, and so and so excellent. It's blowing people's minds. Like, whoa, we haven't seen effects like that before, and like, you know, all that. And so, but they're operating governmentally, and that's why they have these massive funds, and they know how to multiply it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. And that's our job, you know. And so, um, when we start seeing governmentally, and we start functioning governmentally, it's not just about providing for me and my household and. Um, and even just the, you know, the local church or these things, but it's like, who, what it, what it takes to fund a Sony pictures or fund Disney or fund Microsoft. It's like the amount of money flow that goes through. That's why people that are at the top levels of those things, like a billion dollars is not much to them at all. Because totally. that goes through their companies yearly almost, you know, or every few years at least, you know. So, um, and yeah, but like you said, going back to the quality stories and creativity. And then if we steward that well, then, okay, now let's get more coming in so that we can draw in the best of the best. Because there are a lot of phenomenal believers who are in the industry, who are working on these projects and who are working on these projects and would love to be a part of something that has deeper meaning. (laughs) And so, um, so if they had the opportunity to partner with other believers who are making something really quality, really excellent, really creative then they would be excited to use their expertise and their excellence and even non-believers you know i think anyone wants to be a part of a project that's just dope like um regardless of what the message is um and so 
yeah, I think that we, we need to have our minds set on that. Like, that's not too big. That's not just for them. It's like actually what we get to grow into functioning in. Um, yeah, so we, so we can bring the masses into phenomenal stories that they get in, enveloped in and are receiving the love and truth and frequency of the Lord and have no idea that's what they're receiving because um, they, they're not coming under the pretense, oh, I'm coming to a Christian film. I don't know about the, you know, it's we're not putting those labels on it. And I'm, you know, again, it's there's nothing bad about that if you know you feel like okay this is a faith film or this is whatever but the impact it'll have when it's like this is just a film a mainstream film that's excellent and creative and um welcome back (laughs) excellent you missed some great stuff i was did you i'm back (laughs) no um I was just saying, um, oh my gosh, now I just lost my Did you tell him that I left? I didn't. (laughs) To leave. (laughs) I didn't know how you wanted that to play out, So, but I figured they'd see it on the camera. Did you just go for it? So I just kept talking. That's so awesome. You didn't even (laughs) skip a beat. That is so good. Thank you. That's actually a first for me in the podcast. So that's great. Nice. I I just had to go talk to the Lord about something real quick. Oh, okay. He says hi. (laughs) Uh, but I, I was just saying how it's if oh my gosh where was oh but basically if um, people when believers are creating these excellent things not only are Christians who are already helping make these other epic films or just any other films but even non-believers who are phenomenal at what they do they're going to want to be a part of the projects and um and that'll envelop people into this world where it's not being advertised as a faith film or it's not being you know presented as that so people's walls aren't up but it's just like this is just a dope like the matrix is a great example like this is just a dope film that was actually written by a christian and it kind of got there's just kind of a whole story by that. Sure. But God definitely used it because there's so much Absolutely. truth God was releasing through that. And if that was marketed as a Christian thing, like that would have squashed a whole bunch of the impact, you know. And, and most people still have no idea how much God stuff was in there. But it was like, oh, this is a cool world. Like, what is this? Like mystery and adventure and whatever. And then you go and it's, excellent and phenomenal and plenty of people i'm sure of all faiths and backgrounds worked on it um yeah yeah absolutely and and i'm also just thinking of like oftentimes like within kind of like the celebrity culture right like um uh you are such an amazing artist you're such an amazing performer that people will put up with who you really are because mm-hmm. they appreciate uh, your script, your movie, and all you know, and all, all this stuff. Versus, I think of guys like Peter Jackson who did like the Lord of the Rings um, mm-hmm. movies. Like everybody loved being on the set with him because he he wouldn't wear socks or shoes. He was like <laughs> he had like Hobbit feet on. He was like he was just this fun short you know guy like on the set like creating uh-huh. this incredible atmosphere. And I think that there's there's something for us as 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 um, as uh as children of god that we would that we would be such like like we'd be such ambassadors of life abundantly yeah that like like the that the story and the testimony of working with us would be like so thrilling like it would contrast any other director or any other filmmaker yeah. so that even because that story like our our story adds so much credibility um uh to like to our authority like our story really establishes our 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 authority i think Mm -hmm. um so if you can have a level of excellence and talent as well as all this character and life and charisma and like and to build a like it'd be so amazing to be like like a like a christian filmmaker but like but to have all these people like i cannot wait i i I got to work with like you know like when you hear that like i gotta work with that guy like Uh i want to work with that guy like wouldn't it be amazing if there were like actual like 
like uh, suns who are manifesting in these realms that are manifesting such life and energy and mm. excitement and just crazy unprecedented creativity yes. that people are just like, I got to work with that guy. Like I might not believe what he believes in, mm. but I got to work with him. Absolutely. One, it's also like... Or her. Or right. her. <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. And it, it's funny because even we put these terms like I want to work a Christian director and... And of course, I get what you mean, but it's funny because when people are like, oh, I want to work with Spielberg, it's not, oh, I want to work with a Jewish producer. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's funny. But, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to work with a Jewish, Jewish producer. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> Which I really want to make a movie with an African American. Like, like, what? <laughs> Like well, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because that's that's great. But it's it's like that's a great point. I'm tracking. It's like um, and and even kind of like um, is like back when I was first performing in college and and doing my music, I'd have Christians come up to me and ask me like, "Oh, is your music Christian?" Oh wow. And I was like, "That's like asking if my keyboard's Christian." Totally, totally, I don't totally. Put Jesus stickers all over it. <laughs> totally. But everything I play, regardless of the genre or content of the song, is giving Him glory. And so, it's like I don't need to advertise myself as a Christian artist or even an artist that's Christian. That's good. Absolutely. And it's because life is just exploding out of it, and people are going to be drawn and. So, so there's kind of like this reframing the Lord's wanting to do where it's like, yeah. so like, oh, I want to work with this dope producer. And then someone's like, oh, did you know he's a Christian? What? He is awesome. You know? So that's just kind of something I feel he's wanting to shift, you know, in our mindset, but it, the concept is still there. Of course, like we do need phenomenal directors who are Christians and screenwriters who are Christians facilitating that but not necessarily labeling it i agree as as like as it's a genre yeah i agree because it's not then it's putting up walls um yeah so yeah yeah i i, I agree and i and i'm definitely open with and i know you'd be too as far as like there being a christian genre and people actually being called to that kind of christian genre you know like because mm-hmm. i think that there's there's a place for that but i also think that that's all there's been yeah like christian rap christian classical music christian jazz like christian yeah you know versus being like hey why don't you just be a christian but why don't you actually go and see how you're measuring up with people that are actually in kind of the mainstream industry Mm -hmm. and then allow that standard to maybe maybe you're going to go far beyond the center awesome that's great Mm -hmm. or maybe you're not quite measuring up but it's actually going to pull you it's actually going to make you accountable to Mm-hmm. And I think that would be awesome. And I think that people are starting to catch on to that whole I think artists are starting to think differently. Yeah. But it's just been in our lifetime. Like this mm-hmm. conversation and this is like just in the last twenty years, wouldn't you say, as far as people breaking out of that kind of paradigm? Yeah, I think so. Well, and I think part of the reason they st- started some of the Christian industry is because they it's like they had a hard time getting into the current vehicle. Um Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> so totally. you know, and so they, it was like they kind of needed to create something um, to facilitate that. But there's also the legalism of the '80s as well, though. That basically said that you could only listen to, and I don't know how much of that's mm. part of your own kind of story, but you know, there was there was a structure where it was like, if it's not Christian, you don't listen to it. It won't be in our house if it's not Christian, you right. know. And so it gave us children of the '80s. Mm. like like we got to listen to rap music because it was christian rap music Mm. you know um and we got to listen to rock music in different kinds of genres you know until we got that to a certain age we started sneaking pearl jam albums into the house you know (laughs) and then we told our parents it's christian but um you know uh versus now i like sure there are still like there's still standards and there's still you know things that we have to process through but I just think that there was a legalistic structure that kind of framed out this yeah. genre-specific um, categories for art. Yeah, so rather than just discerning, is this artist clean? It's like, oh, if there's a Christian sticker on it, then we can have it or our kids can listen to it. And, um, and I mean, and when you think about it, I mean, 
this similar thing would be saying, oh, this is Christian music, this is atheist music, this is, you know, fill in the blank, this, you know. Islam music. Yeah, exactly. It's like... The, Islamic rap. <laughs> the other people, artists of other religions... It's kind of funny. ...don't, yeah, say that. <laughs> this is Islamic rap, or this is, Islamic yeah. Islamic country western music, you know. Right, it, yeah, it's just like, oh, this is a country western art artist and he happens to be, you know, whatever. And so it really is. And the Lord told me years ago to stop using the word Christian and secular. That's good. Because secular means void of God. Wow. And so we're actually framing up keeping that void really of good. God. Really good. Therefore, anything with God can't penetrate. Really good. And so that's why he said, call it mainstream. Awesome. And then there's worship. Because worship has a function of that intimacy with Yahweh when you're already in relationship. So when, you know, sons come together who are already in that relationship, you're worshiping the Lord together. That serves a different function. And then to me, what he's shown me is that everything else is just music that goes into all streams of life. And because God created all of life. And so, I mean... You know, you have this fun dance song and it's talking about just being free to release the dance. To me, that's out of the heart of God. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm not going to call it Christian. Right. Because, you know, yeah, it just it just puts this box on it that cuts off a lot of the life and puts it in this religion rather than like just release it into creation. God didn't call that tree is a christian tree and that is that river is yeah because we're, we're, we're kind of inconsistent in it like we're, we're like we have christian music but we don't go to christian um uh grocery stores or like christian restaurants right, right? like exactly. so we'll, we'll eat food you know that's been offered i don't know like we'll eat food from like a, like from a secular restaurant like we don't think that way right or, or you go into like a thai restaurant and there's like buddha there but they don't advertise, we're a Buddhist restaurant. You know, it's just like, no, we have Thai food. And, and then you see kind of the atmosphere and what they flow in. Which is, which is really funny. I mean, t I, I've never heard of a Christian that, that said, no, I'm not going to eat here because there's a Buddha statue in the restaurant. Right. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> so there's like a certain level of in inconsistency there as far as we'll interact and engage and even receive into our body, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, there's just this reframing of like... I like... Yeah, I like that. Let's just breathe life into creation, period, and let the fruit speak for itself and draw the people. Um, and then they can ask what the source is. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. If I'm trying to preach to them, this is who this is coming from, they're going to be like, eh, eh, you know. But it's like, no, if the fruit is so attractive, they're going to just ask. And when they're asking it's going to be easy for them to be drawn into it, you know? Awesome, awesome, awesome. People are going to want to connect with you. They're going to want to, like, follow this 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 awesome journey um, that you're on. And so uh, you're on, like, Instagram and... Instagram um, and Twitter mostly. Cool. So I'll... Uh, I'll put the I'll put your handle in the okay. show notes, and so okay. everybody connect with Brittany because she's on this wild journey. And what I love about Instagram is you can actually go back uh -huh. and see a lot of the cool stuff that you've done, and you can kind of right. like see the different things over the years and stuff. Um, so yeah, let's connect with Brittany and check out with Brittany and check out the cool stuff that she's done, but also so that we can really celebrate you and encourage you. Um, with you. this stuff that you're uh, engaging with in the present and that you're about to. And I'm super excited about your your desire to, uh, you just said foundation so many times mm. throughout this conversation. And I, and I love that. Like, I love the fact that, 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 you, that you really care about the platform that you're going to be building on, mm -hmm. but not just for yourself, but for future generations to also build on. I know that right. anytime you say the word foundation, that just immediately implies that this is going to take some time. Yeah. But I also think that that just shows a great level of maturity in that mm -hmm. if we're going to build something, let, let's be like the wise man that built the house on the rock, right? Yeah, exactly. So that it can survive um, the cultural winds, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the religious fads, so that we can actually yeah. really build something that's timeless and that you yeah. know, and create art that's timeless. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I and so this has been a fun conversation, just really hearing your own kind of like artistic ethic as well mm -hmm. as really 
uh, hearing just like your maturity and discerning and just being obedient to the Lord and these incredible opportunities that you had and turned down because just this whole place of, of obedience is greater than sacrifice. Mm. And I just know that God is, is rewarding you and will continue to uh, reward you with incredible opportunities to really um, uh, 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 bring his light and life and truth and justice onto the earth. So mm. I know Amen. I'm applauding you, Brittany. I know everybody that listens to, to this is going to be greatly encouraged and hopefully challenged by just this this conversation so thanks so much for doing this yeah thank you so much for having me this has been an honor and privilege and, and next time you come to seattle we'll have both cameras both, <laughs> so we'll be way more yes. technological t- technologically advanced here okay. all right it'll, it'll be it'll be 3d you know Ooh, okay yeah, yeah yeah okay i might come back for that then so let's do it again <laughs> appreciate you yeah i'd love to thank you darren you're amazing awesome